Recreation and Culture board meeting. Jackie, will you do roll call, please? Sure. Uh, Cecilia? Present. Christina? Here. Eric, Sharon, and Candy are not with us this evening. Okay, we have we have our um, minutes, but we cannot approve them right now since there are only two members of the park board. So we will go on to uh, to uh, approval of the agenda. Can we? Do that? Not really Can we? There's not okay, no quorum. We'll so we're going to just move right on to the division report. Okay, good evening. So I have a fun fact um, for September. And this is, did you know that occupational wellness is just as important as physical wellness? Work-life balance is key to occupational wellness. And one way you can improve occupational health is to invest time in your hobbies. And what better place to do that at your local parks and recreation facilities? Okay, uh, looking at the Senior Center, we wanted to share some trends with you. We are seeing increased visitation at the Senior Center. Um, we have our scan-ins, which is when our members come to the Senior Center, they scan their badge into the Senior Center to indicate their attendance that day. And that is up 24% from July's numbers, our August numbers were. So um, that's a pretty big jump with 600 additional scan-ins during the month. And our transportation trips are up 19%, uh, which is 70 additional trips between July and August. We had 1,434 volunteer hours logged. So as we've said many times before, we could not do all that we do at the Senior Center without the help of our many fantastic volunteers. And we are always looking for more volunteers to help us out as well. So if you're interested in that, give us a call or shoot us an email. We can help, help find the right role for you. In August, we had our first back to normal indoor special event after we had some outdoor picnics and garage sales and things like that throughout the summer. This was our annual corn roast. There were 120 members in attendance was the maximum that we allowed. If we allowed more and we could fit more people in that room, we would certainly have more attendees to the corn roast. People just love it. And we want to thank Homestead Village for being the sponsor. They provided the ribs, the hot dogs, chips, and dessert. And thanks to an anonymous donor who provided the corn on the cob, which corn on the cob is kind of a necessity when you're doing a corn roast. Also in August, we had a presentation from Provident Travel, and 57 people attended this. There's some people interested in getting back to traveling, and there are upcoming trips with Provident Travel to places like Nashville, West Virginia, Las Vegas, and more. And the way these kind of work is we're able to offer, Provident's able to offer these trips at a discounted rate by getting group rates and combining you know, members from our senior center with other senior centers around the area can all take a trip together and get those discounts. We also had a tour of Legacy Village. We want to thank them for providing this for members, and 16 members attended that. They had a tour, lunch, and a history talk. Some upcoming things, and this one is really a current happening. Our fitness room floor is being replaced. Members of our park board might remember that this has happened before and we are getting it replaced again. And hopefully this is the last time that it needs replaced. Um, we had some moisture problems underneath and so the carpet was popping up in places, creating uh, trip hazards. And there's only so much you can do with duct tape and cones and then it's not safe anymore. So we are happy that we are hopefully have found a final solution that will last us years and years and years and years to come to not have that moisture problem. This has been an ongoing problem ever since we expanded the senior center and that fitness room area. 
um, and created the fitness room in the current location that it's in. Prior to that, we didn't have anything in that space. So the moisture was a new discovery for us. So that's happening this week and the fitness room unfortunately is closed this week. We do have a few pieces of equipment in our game room. So if somebody comes and they really um, were set on getting their workout and maybe they didn't get the message or they still just wanna get in a little bit of time on a bike or a treadmill, we do have a few pieces of equipment available. Hopefully this will be done by the end of the week and come next Monday we'll be back open. Okay, today we had our game day at the Senior Center. We had a lot of fun. This picture is not from today. We weren't that fast on getting these slides updated. But uh, this afternoon we had box lunch from Cherry House and games throughout the center. There were four different games, total of eight teams. And um, teams traveled around in stations to those four different games and had friendly competition at each one. So there was um, a game called like five minute to win it or something like that. Someone will correct me if I, when they <laughs> watch this and <laughs> remember what the real name of that game was. There was chair volleyball, giant Jenga, and a version of indoor bocce ball, which was pretty cool. I do want to thank Village at the Green. They were the sponsor and provided that delicious lunch from Cherry House for us. They also hosted a game. And while I was at the Senior Center today enjoying the game day, there was lots of buzz about this Nudie Fox tour. This is a trip that's happening next week. This is our first trip in a long time and people are excited. Um, you go to a few different consignment shops, these Nudie Fox consignment shops in the Cincinnati area. We take a bus, you get snacks and food and discounts the whole day and shop to your heart's content and people have a blast. So they are really looking forward to it. And we have several um, sponsors that help make this trip more affordable for our members. Those are Trinity, Heartland, Le and Legacy Village. We have also partnered with the Ohio Department on Aging and are hosting a fall prevention awareness walk this month is Fall Prevention Awareness Month. This will be Friday, September 24th at 10.30 a.m. It's just a 30 minute walk along a flat paved trail at the Fifth Third Gateway Park. And so if you'd like to join, please come on out that day. We're hoping for sunshine and maybe like 70 degrees. All right, we've got a few exercise and wellness presentations Coming up, we have a wellness lunch and learn tomorrow, thanks to the Dayton Outpatient Center Physical Therapy. And then we have a low back pain presentation, thanks to Excel Physical Therapy the following week. All right, wrapping up the Senior Center info and moving on to the general recreation, I want to share about a new program partner that we have. Um, Emily Herding is the instructor for STEMily Studios. You might notice the play on words. Her name is Emily, and this is STEMily, and she does STEM programs. Um, so she has um, a STEM based, if you've heard of uh, STEM, the science, technology, engineering, and math, if you add an A to it, that adds art into it. So there is STEAM in nature, science, technology, engineering, art, and math in nature for ages seven to 12. This is an after school type program. Um, it is weekly, it's not every single day, October 4th to 25th. It's just once a week. Um, and there are weekly themes. So the October's themes include worms, bats, snakes, and bugs. And then for the younger ones, she has story and STEM. This is for ages three to six. It's also a weekly series and there's story time and a STEM based activity based on the story. So we are looking forward to those. If you check out our website, we have tons of different things, different programs that Emily and STEMily Studios are providing for us. There's lots of different fun. In fact, this week we had a geocaching program that she led as well. So we're excited to partner with her. 
You may remember this summer we had Learn to Kayak scheduled. We had two dates. The July date, unfortunately, we had thunderstorms roll through that night. So we have rescheduled it. It's later this week on Thursday. And we're happy to partner with Wright State Campus Recreation. They'll pr they're providing the kayaks, the um, life jackets, and the instructors. And we'll be kayaking out on Dominic Lafino Park's lake. Our popular dance classes have returned. There are three levels of swing dance and one level of ballroom dance. Classes begin the week of September 20th. So sign up really soon if you want to snatch a spot because that's coming up quick here. And um, we've noticed we had a few um, swing dances this summer out in the park that were you know, free for people to attend. And there was great response to those. And we've had a great response and kind of an uptick in registrations so far for the dance classes this fall. Our archery clinics are back for the first time since pre-COVID. We have beginner and intermediate clinics, one coming up on September 25th. We'll do that one outdoors at Virgilito Park, and then another in October, and we'll try to do that one indoors at our municipal maintenance facility as the weather gets a little bit dicier towards the end of October. Um, I do wanna think we've got several volunteers that make these archery clinics possible. I wanna thank them for staying committed to teaching archery, especially after a long, a long gap that we've had. Perennial Trade Day, one of our park board members is integral in this effort. Um, Cecilia and her partner, um, her partner in Perennial Trade, Lisa. You hang out a lot too, they're friends. Um, they will be hosting the Perennial Trade Day on September 25th. If you're interested in participating and you're not sure what that's all about, give us a call, we'll help you out. But it's real simple. You bring 10 plants to trade and you go home with 10 new plants to you. And Lisa and Cecilia do a, a great job of um, facilitating the rounds of trading and making sure everybody is fair and has a good time. And you might not always get exactly what you want, but you'll get something new and fun and you'll get to meet some some new people who can share with you some knowledge about some plants you might not have known about already. Okay, our fishing derby is back. We're gonna try this the same way we tried it last year, which had a great response um, from September 19th, which is this Sunday through the 26th. You can go fishing at Dominic Lafino Park. We are stocking the pond with some more hybrid bluegill and channel catfish and all you have to do is send us a photo of your child fishing out at the park during those dates and you'll be entered to win some prizes so we've got some reds tickets a scene 75 gift card and some other um, fun little goodies and prizes and gift cards tickets to places you do not children do not need a fishing license out at dominic lafino park so you are good there. Okay, and then our popular Try a Truck is back on October 2nd. This one will be like we remember it. Um, <laughs> last year we did a drive through. We'll be back to a um, typical where we'll have all of the trucks parked and stationary and everyone walking around and visiting the trucks versus last year when we had the truck stationary, but everyone drove through and looked at the trucks. Um, so you'll be able to get out of your car and check out the trucks up close and personal this year. Um, this is on October 2nd from 10 to 1, and we will bring back our sensory friendly hour where we don't do the flashing lights and the honking horns during that first hour for anybody who um, you know, does better without all of those noises and lights. Oh, and I'll just go back one because the next part's Kim's. Any, <laughs> any questions about um, anything going on in recreation or the senior center? No, thank you, Erin. Okay, you're welcome. You're doing so good. I just thought, just keep rolling. Well, I can't. Can. Just make it up as you go. <laughs> good evening. Uh, so I'll be filling in for Zach. He usually gives, does the park side, but I think I can uh, figure this out as well. 
Um, so, but we did want to thank um, all of our city staff. Uh, this past weekend, we had the Popcorn Festival, and not only that, on Saturday, we had a 9-11 memorial ceremony. Uh, so big thanks to the police department and the fire department um, and their FOP. Uh, they put on the ceremony, and we were just kind of the support staff. Um, I was not able to make it, but I heard a lot of great things. So it was nice that we were able to honor the memory of those that you know were lost at 9-11. Um, so, but then the popcorn festival right after that, and I don't know if you got out there, but it was steady stream of people constantly. And, um, our staff shuts down the road. Uh, we had somebody there all weekend to assist if anything went awry. Uh, but it was, it was a great festival. Uh, popcorn festival is a volunteer committee that puts all that together. Um, and it's not a city event. We just we support them. So they do a great job, so we always thank them for putting together a fantastic festival. Um, so as we new, move into our parks, um, a couple of our really popular parks and uh, park equipment um, has been down for a little bit. Uh, the Gravity Rail at Spicer Heights. Um, we did get that repaired last week, um, and we have that on a rotation to have the bearings changed a few times a year that's what slows up the trolley so if you're out there and it starts slowing down just give our parks department a call uh, we can just switch out the the ball bearings and get it moving along please do not try to spray it with WD-40 or put any oil or anything on the track it's the inside of the carriage bit and it will take care of that um, and probably the most devastating is Shout Park that big slide we had to close that for maybe a week. Um, we had to weld some of the slide together, but it's all up and working. It's great. Everything is smooth. So you're free to go back out to shop and enjoy the, the mound slide. The Tobias Zimmer Barn. Um, this has been a very long process, but now it's getting very exciting. Um, I think I mentioned last month that we did have the, con the contract signed. Um, by the end of this week, so there was one wall, and I put my hand up so because you can figure that's the wall. That's come. <laughs> I don't know why I do that, but it makes sense to me. So the wall that was next to the lean-to, the lean-to is fine. That was still sturdy. That's going to stay. But that last wall we had to take down. Um, that'll go and be stored with all the other pieces because um, we're going to the design part of it will be using some of the old pieces of the original barn. Um, but that'll come down this week. And then over the next few weeks, we're going to remove the concrete foundation, pour a new foundation. You won't see anything else happening out there for the rest of this year. And then in April is lumber is about a seven month wait time. Uh, so we'll have lumber in April and then then it'll be really really fast it'll just go up and it'll be open by next during next summer so uh, we'll be looking to do a groundbreaking in march and then a ribbon cutting for the barn um, next june so really exciting i know everybody has been watching for this and asking questions so we are finally moving on it so it's it's exciting uh fifth third gateway um, if you haven't been out there, uh, we finished out a gravel parking lot improvements. So part of the parking lot is paved, and then the rest has been gravel. Um, and it was a really big gravel parking lot um, with ruts and all that. So our staff went in and we squared it out a little bit more, uh, brought the parking lot in a little bit, and then that way we can plant some grass. And then we've planted some wildflowers back there too. So you'll start seeing those pop up and it'll go along Creekside Trail a little bit as well. So that's, it's just a little bit more of a finished product out there, which again, our staff did a, a phenomenal job on. Uh, the Spotted Turtle Trail. Um, again, I think this is a project that you've heard Zach talk about uh, for the past, past few months. This is through the Beaver Creek Wetlands. Um, they have spearheaded this project and we're helping them out. Rotary Park is a trailhead to get onto the Spotted Turtle Trail. Um, there's going to have infographics up. We're going to have a big trailhead sign at Rotary. Um, the foundation there and the frame is there. I don't think the signs are in yet. 
they're here in Greene County, they're just not on site yet. Um, but we've also built an observation deck. Um, so what used to be just an open field before you got to the trail um, is now a nice observation deck. We've been killing off like the plants and the weeds. Um, and then, so again, that'll be a wildlife prairie. Um, so as soon as we know that, I think there's one more time that we have to cut that down and then they'll start planting wildflowers um, this fall. Um, so that'll be really cool when that's up and then there'll be infographics throughout the, uh, the trail. Um, so many different organizations and communities have been getting involved in that. Uh, Green Shaw Bike Access. Um, so hopefully here in the next few weeks, uh, we're going to update the little picnic area. Um, it doesn't have a shelter or anything like that. Um, but a lot of people do use that as like a bike hub. They'll park and then get on Creekside Trail. Um, we have a picnic table out there, uh, but it's not sitting on concrete. So our guys are going to level that out, put some concrete down, put a picnic table on it, um, and then also a bike repair station. So. We'll have a bike repair station at Beaver Creek Station, Fifth Third Gateway, um, and now at Green Tall. So that way, hopefully, you never need it, but it's nice to have. Um, and then again, one of the things that we try to do at the end of the softball season, um, usually about October, we shut all the fields down. Um, so no more games, no more tournaments. Um, and so our staff can work on all the athletic fields and get them ready for the new year. So they'll level them. We have a nice laser grade um, machine that takes care of all that. And then we'll start aerating and seed the turf areas. So if you have any questions on the park side, I'm happy to answer those. Great. Okay, any old business that we need to discuss? I don't think so. So no. the pickleball people, <laughs> yeah. you said you had a meeting with them? Oh, uh, Microphones. You had a meeting with the pickleball people mm -hmm. sometime after our last meeting? Mm -hmm. Any follow-up on that? or? So I spoke with... Um, one of their representatives um, to look at some temporary netting and how we can set up a temporary court. Um, and so we've decided because it, what I had in my head that I thought might work, she doesn't believe that it's going to. It'll be a nice like band-aid, but we're not going to get the people out there that we were hoping to. Um, so we are going to take this winter to plan it out better. Um, so still using possibly the Lafino tennis courts, um, repainting so it's tennis, and then shifting the pickleball courts sideways so we can get more courts in, but still kind of on a temporary basis until we can find a, a home turf for them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, new business. Any volunteer opportunities coming up? Everyone looked to me, so <laughs> yes. Um, besides what I mentioned, the Senior Center always looking for volunteers. Um, if anybody is interested in getting certified um, as a basic archery instructor, I could use, we could use additional volunteer archery instructors. Um, Candy is one of our volunteer archery instructors, but she's been un unable to help for a little while. Um, and I'd love to chat with you if you're interested in potentially doing that and tell you more about that. Um, that's kind of an ongoing thing. And then for our upcoming events, the fishing derby, I will send an email out yet this week, just reminding people that the fishing derby is going on and asking you all as part of park board, as well as city council and a couple other, um, volunteer groups that I know are interested in the fishing derby a very loose schedule to sign up for a time to go visit the park talk to people who are out there who may not realize the fishing derby is going on or what it means 
check that there's still flyers out there, that kind of thing, and report back to me so that I, that I personally don't have to spend the entire week camped out at the park. Um, so look for that in your email. Um, and then try a truck. If you'd like to be out at try a truck on October 2nd, we are looking for some helpers. That's it for now. Great. Thank you, Erin. No unscheduled visitors today. Any action items, Kim, that we should be aware of? Wow, way to call me out right there. No. Um, I think probably for action items, um, we still need to, we're still regrouping on the volunteer recognition oh. event. Um, so I think we'll work on that again in October. Um, and I think... I think that's it. Will we do another work session in October? Yeah, I shoot for will. one. Okay. Yes. Great. Board time. Anything? The biggest news of all. So I'd like to congratulate the parks folks for their accreditation through the. National Recreation and Park Association. Like, yep, it's <laughs> which is a, a huge accomplishment mm -hmm. and uh, says a lot for the entire team who I'm sure worked very diligently to get that accreditation uh, self study completed and submitted. Thank you. I'm going to piggyback on that and say congratulations as well. I know that was a lot of hard work, and uh, you guys are very dedicated to the green space here in. Beaver Creek and we all appreciate it so thank you all right if that is all we can go ahead and adjourn motion to adjourn now we're done she just shuts down hey <laughs>